Hey everybody, Adam Savage from Tested here on the floor at Silicon with my friend Ryan Nagata and an unbelievable spacesuit to talk about. You might think you have never seen this spacesuit, but in fact, you've seen it thousands of times because if you've seen the classic Apollo American spacesuit, the A7L or the A7LB, this is what was inside it. This is part of the structure inside that allows the astronaut to move in a pressurized environment. Ryan, you are a madman that you made this. Uh, yeah. yeah <laughs> I mean, I, I've been making these for a few years now, and uh, I maybe five years ago I decided I'm, you know, I make the ones that are for costumes, like yeah. the one I made for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to make something that was like super accurate, yeah. like that, that copied not only the things that you see, but the things that you don't see. And um, I mean, every part that I've, I've you know, replicated in some way. It's not a real suit. Yeah. It won't hold pressure um, for a number of reasons. Yeah. Uh, but I'm trying to like make everything uh, to spec without guessing. So I've had to like acquire a lot of original parts and, and through like going to ILC Dover and measuring these things. But uh, I, yeah. we were talking earlier about these little these little uh, uh, bushings here with mm -hmm. the string with the parachute cord going through them. Tell me about those. Um, so the real ones were Teflon. Yeah. I just 3D printed these, but the, the real suit had a system like this where, you, you know, a, a pressure suit has to maintain constant volume. Right. And so all of these crazy little structures were just ways to uh, uh, allow the astronaut to move while keeping constant volume of this suit. And one of the things they did was they had these little Teflon bushings and, and oh, they it, work actually like they should. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. I didn't actually know how this worked until I duplicated <laughs> exactly um, the way it was done. And then I realized when it, like, because of the way it's laced, when you expand on one side, it collapses, it collapses on the other. It. So they came up with all these creative ways to do that. I um, want to be really clear. When Ryan says constant volume, picture holding a raft for a pool and then trying to bend it perfectly in half. And you know, we all have that feeling that it gets harder and harder to bend it. That's what's happening in an astronaut suit. Every time they are moving a limb, they are having that same amount of resistance and it's a way higher pressure than your pool raft, right? It's four and a half pounds per square inch. Um, yeah, it's... Uh... It, it would be like wearing a, a football, I think, something like that. <laughs> yeah. And you, you just wouldn't be able to bend. So everything on the suit, all of these, like the shoulder convolutes, these are not, the, the real ones were cast rubber. Yeah. So I just yeah. sew these out of, of spandex, like neoprene. Right. Uh, to kind of get the look. But um, every all of these cables, so it's like an accordion, so you can bend it, but the cables, if you inflated an accordion, it would just expand. Right. So all of these cables are, are meant to pull the thing together, so it just, can keep moving like that. So these cables kind of do the same thing for the shoulders that these do for the upper yeah. arms. I see. So this is not, um, the real ones were steel cables. Right, but right. But because this is a costume, I, I used a piece of paracord there. Is that a bearing in there? Yeah, so uh, another way that they have mobility in the suit besides the convolute is to have bearings. Wow. Uh, and it's actually pretty a uh, pretty good way of, of getting this kind of arm mobility is to put a bearing I uh, found right that on the, the on the XEMU. I yeah. was surprised at how much mobility that added. So yeah, these are machined uh, aluminum. I, I I try to use all anodized aluminum parts on yeah. this suit. Um, so did you machine a bearing race and put bearings in yourself? No. So <laughs> I can I machine these. Yeah. Uh, anything up until this size fits on my machine. Got it. And this was just a little too large, so I went to a machine shop to get these bearings made, and then the large ring also what went to from a machine shop. Yes, yeah. I haven't seen these before. This is new. Oh yeah, yeah. So um, so the real one oh, had. Oh, nice. This is like my own little yeah, creation. Yeah, no, I here. really like it. There's a little tiny like um, a little bayonet. bayonet lock. And uh, I don't know if I have the gloves here. They're maybe, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, it locks in there. Maybe we'll get a close up of it after. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, the real thing had was like the neck ring, um, which had these like little locking pins. Yeah. Uh, but it's just it was just a little bit too much work to do that. So you just I, I love that. It's a really bike. simple solution. Yeah. And but it's there's very also positive. magnets that hold it. Like otherwise, it would just be flopping around. Oh, so, right, right, right. Yeah. Um, any new things on the connectors? Oh, I see you've actually got some plugs coming out <laughs> of the electrical <laughs> connector. So, yeah, uh, I had a collector friend came by and looked, and he said, "Did you copy?" 
like the exact pen placement of the real one. I was like, yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, so I, I think I got laser cut the little, uh, I, I haven't been able to find this connector. It's like 61 pins. I, you know, it's so funny because when I built my Mercury suit and the leg connector, mm -hmm. I found it right away, Yeah. right? It's a really standard military connector, but this one. Yeah, it's uh, Mercury, you could, a lot of the stuff was military, but uh, by Apollo, it was all uh, custom, custom made stuff. Right. So yeah, I, I put those pins in there. I got a little a little um, wire rounding tool to like round each pin. No way. So, yeah. Um, uh, tell me about how you do the etching in here. Is that laser? That is. Uh, I went to an engraving uh, place oh. to get this done. It's like one of the one things I can't do myself. Yeah. Uh, and this was a laser, um, but. One of the reasons I like people ask me to make metal parts, and I almost always say no, is because of the engraving. Right. Um, I went to a shop that specializes in this kind of stuff, and then the first one they did, they I, I had given them the file, the exact size. Yeah. The um, the I put stickers on here with the placement. I yeah. went over it, and then when I got it back from the shop, it was like three times bigger. It was like the worst. Oh, uh, and it was on a thing that you had finished. Yeah, on a, yeah. Oh my gosh. Luckily, we could shave it down just enough that and we could redo it. it. Yeah, but like the engraving is, is the hardest, but it is with a laser. The okay. real one probably was like a pantograph kind of tool, I think they call those. Yeah, pantograph the mill. The, my friend Victor Broadley used one of those on my uh, Hellboy Samaritan bullets, on these guys oh, actually, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, that's a pantograph mill cutting that. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will connect the two of you. Okay. I think he can help you out. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, you know, there's one other, uh, another thing. Yeah. Because you mentioned the joints. There is a way, this suit did have to bend, you know, when they sat down, but it's the, it's not, it's the original suit, not the B suit. Yeah. And in order to do that, I'd always wondered what this device was. Why there was, was so much. Yeah, well, it's it's so they can actually force the, the suit into a seated position oh. while it's pressurized. So it has to be a block and tackle so you can get enough force. But um, it never worked in any of my previous replicas. Yeah. But when I copied it exactly, it actually does like start to do that. <laughs> is this one of your 3D printed buckles? Uh, no, no, this one is uh, laser cut. Okay. But I do, I, I figured out, I can actually 3D print them now. When I first started doing this, it was too expensive. But yeah. The prices have gone down. But this one was a, the laser cut one. For metal 3D printed. Yeah, for metal 3D printed. Amazing. Printed. Yeah. Um, tell me about these yellow booties. Is that original? Is that real? <laughs> so these, uh, when they walk to the pad, so the, the pressure boot yeah. on the Apollo suit has this Velcro on the bottom. Oh, right. Oh, my God, Ryan. Um, that is perfect. Yeah, Look at I duplicated. You. After I went to ILC, I, I measured the real boot. I took a rubbing of the bottom so I could get the Velcro placement I exactly right. I love you so much. Did you cast this sole? Yeah, I cast this sole, too. <laughs> Um, I didn't have a machine that could sew the sole, so I sewed the master, and then these are just castings of no! thread. No! Oh my but, god. Um, but anyway, it has this Velcro so they could stick to surfaces on the lunar module. Of course, um, of course. In zero gravity. But they didn't want to scuff it up on the pad. Yeah, when you're walking the pad, I, I've walked around in these in my shop, and it and as you can see, it collects all kinds yeah, of yeah. stuff. Um, so they, they had, um, they just put these yellow work uh, like overshoes on and they they don't have the exact i haven't found the exact ones that they had but they still make very similar stuff i had to grind off some of the inaccurate details but <laughs> oh and they they did cut them open wider oh, so you to could, fit the yeah, boots right, right the real one is it's more like here but they're pretty close how is this to wear is it highly constricting um it's it's uh, very hot <laughs> and I actually yeah. did build a, a ventilator for it. Oh, you and did? And it does have um, it does have a fairly accurate ventilation system. So there's like um, this sort of tubing. Oh yeah. But it has reticulated foam in it. So the 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 real ones had multiple tube like spring tubes yeah, in yeah. there. But I wasn't because the the ventilators that I'm using aren't aren't liquid oxygen. They're, right. they're just fans. Yeah. I wanted to maximize the the volume or the, excuse me, the, 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 the space that the air could pass through. Sure. And those tubes were way small. They were, they're smaller. Yeah. So I thought if I put like reticulated foam in there, that's how they, that's like a how highly they, open cell yeah, foam is what you're talking about. That's how they ventilated the mercury suit. Okay. Um, because I have a real Navy Mark IV suit and they yeah. have all these flat tubes with reticulated, like some <clears> kind of foam in there. 
and they could pump air through it. So I, I made these tubes yeah. and that, that connect to the manifolds. Oh, so they actually um, do connect to the right manifold, to the yeah. correct manifold. I changed the path a little bit, so I wasn't getting enough air in the helmet. Yeah. So I added the second one Ooh, here. Oh, oh, um, nice. I, it was all just about maximizing the yeah, airflow. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you have some coming out here. Yeah. That keeps... Oh, you can kind of see the um, the manifolds here oh, and yeah. the tubes. They go around. This one goes around and connects to the top here, and this one goes around and connects here. And then oh, yeah. I have one that goes up through the arm. And the one goes down uh, to the bottom of the leg. And you feel it when you put air in there. Yeah, you can actually, when I connect the, the ventilator that I made, it, um, you can feel it. And it definitely, especially if you're sweaty, yeah, yeah, <laughs> then yeah. it cools down immediately. Um, tell me about this, did you make this, uh, that? Oh, that tube? Yeah. No, so when I worked on First Man, uh, I don't know where they got this tube, but they had a small, they had a small amount of it in a box that they shipped back to me of stuff that I rented to them. Oh my gosh. And I was like, I asked them where they got it and they, they nobody remembered no. the production had shut down. So no. I was like, but we have so to ask a, the viewers if they know where this comes from. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it's like, um, it's like a rubber tube, but a spring tube, but instead of being round, it's sort of oval. Oval, yeah. yeah. And it's like an inch, uh, inch and a half wide, inch yeah. and three quarters wide. That's amazing. Um, but I copied the direction of the the like the tubes and the plenums based on that um, that X-ray photograph. Yes, so yes. You can actually see where the tubes flow. And, and you so have I a, copied the. You have ventilation that comes out the wrists as well. No, it doesn't go. It stops short of that. Okay. So the real one did did have the thing that yeah. could actually go all the way to the glove. I, I nixed that. But. Um. So when you you're finding all the things that I. <laughs> <laughs> when you started on this and you thought, okay, I'm crazy. I am gonna build this. Was the hardest thing you anticipated actually the hardest part to build? What was the most difficult thing to, um, to solve? Well, it's always the bubble helmet, which I, you already did a video about, because you have one of my bubble I helmets do. as well. Yeah. That was probably the hardest thing. Uh, the second hardest thing I actually have here was trying to get this, The so this is a Leva. Right. This was the, the visor assembly that they wore on the moon. And people don't realize this bolted on top of the bubble helmet. Yeah. It wasn't a separate helmet. You didn't take off the bubble and put this on. This went on around the bubble helmet to protect yeah. it. So, uh, I mean, I spent years trying to find the, the perfect coating for these kind of things. I started with like a, an all clad paint, yeah. which actually was kind of good because the, the vacuum form quality wasn't perfect and the paint would kind of hide the flaws a little sure, bit. Sure, sure. But then I found there was a company called Angel Gilding where you could make these gold, um, these gilding chemicals that you would, they, they were like like water solutions. Like the way they make an actual mirror. Yeah. Yeah. And you could swish it around. It takes like 40 minutes of swishing it around over a plastic surface for it to coat. But it did get a, a true gold coating. Amazing. Um, but the thing was, my my um, my visors still weren't perfect, so it was showing all the flaws. But when I was able to oh. do the like the silicone molding technique that yeah. I used on the bubbles, uh -huh. I, I when I did the gold coating on that, it was it was pretty much like a perfect mirror. Like oh there's no, there's no distortion in it. No. Um, I mean, maybe a little bit. Whenever I, can't I look at, you put the clear on the underside. You yeah. are insane. But that's the thing. So the real one was gold on the outside. Yeah. yeah. But I have to do it on the inside, number one, to protect it mm -hmm. and to get like a that perfectly clear um, surface. But also because you swish the chemicals in there, it needs to be like a bowl. It, 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 you wouldn't be able to oh, apply it to the outside. Gotcha. Um, but you also, and then you protect it with a clear coat underneath, yes? Yeah, it, gets, it just gets clear coated underneath. And that's always the the weak spot with the the optics because once you apply a clear coat right it's uh it's it less makes optically it a little blurry clear. but it's I still love the red interior the uh, the real helmets have this red yeah, interior yeah. so um this is uh I is this one I think it's vacuum is this one ABA oh, no this one's actually PETG okay so that's um, my favorite stuff to vacuum for. Yeah, it's just really easy yeah. uh, to do like, and this it's thick too. It was either an eighth or, or, or a quarter inch. Amazing. Um, by the time it gets to the ends, it's thinner. But uh, uh, the first levas that I did were one piece, kind of like the real ones, vacuum formed yeah. over um, 
but then the, the plastic gets so thin towards the end, so when you vacuum form something, it's thickest on top, yeah. and then as you pull the plastic in, it gets thinner. Yeah, yeah. So I had to break it up into several parts, like a top part and a bottom part, and I rivet them together, it's just so everything stays thick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's just much more solid that way. Tell me about this. I don't, I've never seen this before, but it looks totally uh, real. Yeah, this is actually Nomex Velcro. Nomex so was, Velcro. Yeah, so the real, Velcro was made out of Nomex. It's, it was similar to this. Yeah. Not exact. Wow. Um, but it's. I think it's called uh, high air uh, Velcro, and um, it's. Uh, uh, it's you, you have to buy a huge roll of it. But I, <laughs> I did find a place that sells it by the yard, but it is Nomex, and that's wow. what the real. So sometimes you see on these suits, the Velcro looks tan, and sometimes it looks white. Yeah, yeah. It's because Nomex turns yellow. Oh. Uh, over okay. time. So that's why there's some variation with it. But Ryan, anyway. I'm just, I'm so inspired <laughs> every time I see your stuff up close. I'm so proud to be the steward of some of your pieces in my collection. I just, I love knowing you and man, you give me so much inspiration. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Dude. Likewise, you inspire me a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, All excellent. Right. Well, thank you so much for showing off this beautiful creation. Oh, there. thank you. Happy All to right. bring it. We'll see you guys next time.